it obvious that I'm conveying fall vibes because like fireplace and like pine cones is I just want to make sure that you guys understand that it's definitely by now fall. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jesse. Welcome back to my channel. It's really been um, a long time. Um, I'm really sorry for the lack of uploads. Um, college has been really hard. There's been a lot of exams and there's been a lot of a lot of stuff. So this isn't really going to be a witchy related video and I'm really sorry about that. I promise that I have more time, more time to plan them out. Um, I will get back to my Wiccan's Corner episodes. Normally they just take a long time to film and to plan out. Um, and I've tried doing a few different videos on the sides, but I didn't really like how they came out and I didn't want to just put something up on my channel just to put something up on my channel. So with that being said, um, I'm really sorry about that. Uploads might still be a little bit slow, but I will try my best to get on it. I also really want to apologize for the lighting in here. I look so washed out. It's like I have like half a lamp in this room and then like half like natural light and then I got this bullshit behind me. And like if I turn on like the big lights then I look like a ghost. So we're just gonna roll with this for now. So I apologize again and yeah. So today's video isn't really gonna be witchy related um, but I decided um, a while back that I wanted to do a few story times on my channel. Um, nothing too crazy because I'm not, I'm, like you know, a lot of shit doesn't really happen to me. <laughs> And I basically just want to tell you guys uh, a little bit about my college experience. So for the um, purposes of the people involved in this video, I will be changing names. Everything um, that also that I'm telling you guys is being told from my perspective and my viewpoint. Um, of course, you know, my view is going to be different from someone else's view who is related to the story. Um, so just keep that in mind, take that with a grain of salt. And let's get right into it. So, leaving high school, let's start with that. So, leading up to college, um, I just graduated high school. Um, I was really nervous to start college. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was very nerve wracking. Um, my entire life, I had only ever lived in one place, I've only ever lived in one house and gone to the same school. I had never been away from home longer than maybe like two weeks at a summer camp and then whenever I went on vacation I was always with my family. Um, so it was really kind of scary um, doing this whole thing and like deciding that I wanted to go away to college. Um, so I got accepted to um, a university, um, which I'm not going to say the name of, I'm here now, but I'm also not going to say the name of it. Um, but I will tell you that I was the only one of two people in my grade that got accepted to this university. It is very hard to get into. Um, my counselor even told me um, at my high school that I could try to apply, um, it was more of a reach school, uh, but not to get my hopes up because I probably wouldn't get in, and uh, I got in! Not only did I get into this school, every school I applied to accepted me, but I chose the school. And the other person that got accepted wound up going to a different school of their choice, so I am the only one from my high school that came to this university. My high school wasn't too big, um, it wasn't too small either. Uh, we had around 210 kids, I think, in our graduating class, and for, um, I thought that was extremely small, but apparently it's, um, it's like kind of like in the middle. <laughs> um, so graduation came around and it was amazing. Um, everyone you know, was like crying and promising to stay in touch, and you know, all all those, like, you know, bittersweet goodbyes. Looking back on it, I didn't focus too much on graduation because as a graduation gift, my mother um, had been saving up for a long time and she decided to take me to the Bahamas as a graduation gift. 
Now, um, I am in school right now for marine science, for like, you know, like ocean studies. I love the ocean. I love, you know, <laughs> Scorpio water sign. <laughs> but I am a huge advocate of, you know, saving the oceans and definitely like, you know, reducing waste and trying to reduce the impact that we've had as a race on other um, creatures that we share this planet with. So it had been a dream of mine to go down to Atlantis um, to swim with the dolphins and to just experience it. I had been researching and planning out exactly where we'd stay, what we would be doing every day, like everything. I had planned this out since I was like 11 maybe and um, it was like the biggest dream of mine. It still is, like I wanna go back because it was, okay, I'll get into it. <laughs> so, uh, we were leaving, I think, two days after my graduation. So we went to my graduation, we had like a little party, and I was like, oh my god. And then we packed and then we left. Now, before this time, I hadn't been on a plane since I was, um, I think, 10. And that was my last trip to Disney World. Um, so I was really nervous, but um, fast forward, you know, I obviously got on the plane. Um, wasn't as bad as I thought, wasn't as, um, you know, not bad as I thought. It's a little nerve-wracking, you're like, sitting in the sky, like, never mind. So, <laughs> so we get there, and it's everything I dreamed of. I'm running around, like, I'm looking at the pillars, like, I'm studying, like, like the etchings of shells that they had in, like, the pillars, and they had, like, dolphin, um, like, statues, like, spewing water and stuff, water fountains, and it was, like, oh my god, like, there was so much. Um, we obviously didn't get to do, any, like, everything, um, that I wanted to do, um, but that's why I, I want to go back. Uh, so yeah, I remember waking my mom up at like dawn, like 6 a.m. And I am not a morning person. I'll say this right now. I would love to be a morning person. I would love to be able to wake up and like look outside and be like, oh my God, it's a gorgeous day and the sun is rising and early morning yoga and like all that jazz. But honestly, if you try to wake me up at 6 a.m. nowadays, I'll basically tell you to get the hell out of my room. But this trip, I was waking my mother up at like 5.30 in the morning, like, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go swimming, we gotta see the sea turtle, we gotta go like whatever, like, we gotta do this, like, I wanna see this pool, I wanna go on this ride, whatever. I was probably driving her crazy. <laughs> so, uh, on our third day, so we stayed from a Monday to a Friday, um, and then we left on that Friday, and on the third day, my mom arranged for us to go to Dolphin Key. So if you've ever been to Atlantis, um, Atlantis Paradise Island in the Bahamas, they have this place called Dolphin Key, and you can swim with dolphins. And uh, it was probably the best experience I've ever had um, for two reasons. So firstly, obviously being I got to swim with dolphins, and they are magnificent, amazing creatures, and I would love to spend more time with them. So, um, up until this point, I'm gonna give you a little, little uh, TMI here. Um, I had never um, kissed a boy up until this point. Like I said, I feel like I missed out on some things in high school, like you know, parties and first crush and like all that stuff. But I had never kissed a boy. I never. Been relationship um, and that's going to uh, be relevant in a second so uh, how they did this um, dolphin excursion was basically they have like you know pool set up and things like that and they put us in wetsuits and um, we were kind of split into groups so my mother didn't sign up to do this with me because it was a little too expensive so she just um, signed me up for it and I was, she was there, like, you know, with me, but um, she didn't go into the water. But I was paired with this uh, family, and I only found out they were family later. But there was around there, um, it was all guys, and I can tell you right now, they were all, like, trees. They were so tall. Um, and I wound up making friends with um, this boy. 
and um, I was basically being a very hyperactive little like, oh my god, I'm with the dolphins, this is great, oh my god, whatever. Uh, I think I had gotten sunburned at this point, like very, like slightly, so I was like completely red. I did not have makeup on. I didn't even have my glasses on at this point. I wasn't wearing contacts because I'm stupid. <laughs> um, and because I was swimming, so that makes more sense, but I'm still, you know. <laughs> so we, um, we start talking and, you know, I'm being a little awkward muffin and um you know just like being myself basically and he was really sweet and we like really got to talking and my mother was actually talking to his mother who was um also on the beach she didn't want to you know do the excursion it was so nice though we i had the best time we were talking and whatever and i remember this so specifically because we didn't have a uh, cell phone service we didn't have cell phone service, and uh, every time we tried to use our cell phones, it would charge us, like, a lot. So we decided, you know, we're going to put the phones away for this trip, we're going to bring, like, an actual camera. I had my underwater camera at this point, I took a lot of footage, it was so much fun. Um, and yeah, and they're like, you know, like, we're just going to make this, like, you know, whole thing. So I remember I got his number, um, and... I recited it in my head the whole way back to the hotel room because I didn't have my phone. Um, and the guy took pictures of us and it was really great. Um, and I look like, like I'm like this and like they're all like this tall, like standing next to me like this, like that's what the photo looks like. So it was like me with like the whole family and it was really strange, um, but really nice at the same time. Uh, and we're gonna call this kid... Alex. Yeah. Let me write that down. The uh, next day did something incredibly amazing. So um, he has three other brothers. He's the second oldest. Um, so one of his little brothers was sick, like really sick, and I felt so bad, but they had all bought um, tickets to go snuba diving. Um, and yes, I said snuba. So it's basically like snorkeling and scuba diving, um, except when you scuba dive, it's you're all attached to one air tank um, that's like kind of floating and like a ship above you, um, and you're kind of just like all like sharing like like air like from that tank until it runs out. So it was around maybe like ten minutes I think of air um, per person, but it was really nice. So they invited me to go with them. And the tickets were like a hundred dollars each or so and I go up there like you know with the money to pay them and he comes up to me and he takes the money and he gives it back to my mother and he was like no she's not paying for this like this is on us so that was so nice um, considering we had just met them the day before they were so nice so um, and Alex was really cute and really tall Alright, give you a little bit of context here. I am like 5'3", five, 5'4"-ish. Five, I'm not like really, really short. I'm not like really, really tall. I'm like kind of in that middle ground. I'm taller than like, you know, some people um, and a lot shorter than others. This kid, he was in his sophomore year of college, I think at this point. He was going into his sophomore year of college. Um, so he had to be like 19, like almost 20, maybe. Um, he was six foot nine. Yeah. <laughs> he was a tree. Um, so we went out snuba diving and it was absolutely incredible. And I had such an amazing time, like getting to know him and his family and him and <laughs> we um wound up hanging out a little more that night um we took a picture in front of the there's like a big chair in like one of the casinos downstairs and um he like you know we posed in front of it whatever fun fact about this trip so you can legally drink there if you're over 18 but because my birthday's in october i was still 17 so i still couldn't drink 
in a different country. I, I still couldn't drink. I, it was, it was interesting. And also because I wasn't 18 yet, um, there was a club upstairs that was like 18 and up and he tried to get me in and failed. So, um, you know, I told him like, you know, cause I, you know, didn't want to inconvenience him, whatever. I was like, go on, like, you know, go upstairs. It's fine. Like, I'll just head back to the room or whatever. And he was like, no, like, let me walk you back. Like at least. And I was like, okay, fine. So he walks me back to my hotel room and he pauses outside the door. Um, to let me in because like I had my key I could have gone in and he just kind of hesitates and I look at him and I was like what what's up and he's like oh no it's, it's nothing and I look back at him and I'm like no what <laughs> I was not letting him get away with this <laughs> and he's plays it off and just kind of like I don't really want the night to end here <laughs> And I did the first daring thing I've ever really done and said, me, me neither. I don't want the night to end either. So we went back downstairs to the casino. Um, he played a few rounds, like I was allowed to sit next to him, but I couldn't gamble because I'm still not 18. <laughs> this is why I need to go back because I can drink, I can gamble, I can get into that club. <laughs> so we were, um, we wound up taking a walk on the beach. It was around 12.30, 1.30-ish. I don't exactly remember. Um, I know the time it was when I got back to the hotel room. It was around like 2.30, but um, yeah, so we're talking, we're walking. I can't remember for the life of me what we talked about. Um, probably really general stuff, to be honest, because we were still kind of getting to know each other. And we walked onto the beach and we sat down on a few of the uh, beach chairs, like, you know, those really long ones that you can kind of like, you know, sunbathe on. So Alex asks me a little bit of like past relationship history and whatever. And I laughed in his face and said, ha, none. <laughs> and he was like, seriously, like nothing. I was like, I've never even been kissed before. And he was like, seriously, <laughs> but <laughs> He, um, he asked me why, and I told him, you know, not for lack of, not wanting to, not for lack of not wanting to, but, um, the opportunity never really presented itself in a way that I was comfortable with, and most of the guys, um, in my school were, uh, grade A douchebags, and... Um, the ones that weren't were either gay or had uh, girlfriends already, so there wasn't really a lot, especially in my grade. Um, the grades below me even weren't that great, and I just never really felt comfortable. Um, I didn't feel extremely comfortable now, if I'm being honest, like looking back on it, I didn't feel like 100% comfortable, but I was like, you know what, I'm in the Bahamas. I am only here for like another night. We were leaving the next day. So like at like early in the morning, I was up till like 2 a.m. with him. And I was like, oh God, like I need to like get my life together. I'm like, I need to start living. And I start college in like a month and a half. And I want to say I kissed a guy before I went to college. So, <laughs> um, you know, I was like, I felt comfortable enough and I was like, you know, not for lack of not wanting to, just, you know, it, it never really presented itself. And then he looks at me, he looks at me and he's like, well, what about now? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, up until now, because I was trying to be flirty. And so we wound up, um, I wound up moving from my lounge chair onto his lounge chair and we were sitting there and we were talking a little bit more and whatever and <laughs> oh my god so he's about to like lay me back down on the lounge chair like we're getting very flirty and like you know I'm like I know it's gonna lead to a kiss and I'm like okay whatever um and like you know we're about to like kiss and then like he's like kind of like like pushing me back or whatever. I swear to God. 
they have like I guess like patrol or whatever at night to make sure like you know no one goes night swimming or like you can actually go night swimming but it's like you know swim at your own risk because there's no lifeguards on duty and I guess they just want to check. The freaking police come down onto the beach with dogs with fucking police dogs <laughs> and they're like they're like hey are you kids okay <laughs> and he's like inches Alex is like inches from my face right now and I'm like about to kiss him and I'm like shit <laughs> so we turn to the officer and we're like yeah yeah you know like we're fine whatever like we're just talking whatever and he's like the police officer is dead ass like oh we heard voices <laughs> and I'm like yeah no shit you heard voices <laughs> like and then he just kind of like looks at us and like I guess like kind of sees that we were like about to have a moment and like just kind of doesn't care and he was like all right whatever like don't go swimming and then like leaves and I was like wasn't planning on it <laughs> I had another activity in mind <laughs> so we laugh that off and like we kind of recover and then Alex um leans in again and he's like hey like are we gonna do this like doesn't actually say it but like you know kind of like hesitates like are you comfortable are you sure whatever he was a really sweet guy um very very nice so I had my first kiss that night um it wasn't um I don't sorry if this looks different my camera um cut off so right the best part too so looking back on it um my first kiss was a lot like anyone else's. Um, I had nothing else to compare it to. Uh, it was awkward, it was a little clumsy, um, but it was sweet in like a very like childlike, innocent way that a part of me kind of feels like I should have had already, but I'm a little behind with that. And there's obviously nothing wrong with it. It's all of um, you know how I choose to live my life and. I wouldn't really change any of it. Um, one thing I do remember from that night though was, so Alex lays me back on the chair, um, I had taken my glasses off and we kind of lost them in the sand for a good like five minutes we were searching for them, um, but we were making out. Uh, I remember I was wearing like a really long um, like skirt and a like crop top and he kind of like breaks the kiss for a second and then looks back at me and was like like this is the point where I would usually start taking your clothes off <laughs> and I remember I just gave him a look like I tried like to raise one eyebrow which like I can't do but like I was just like you try and I am going to kick you where the sun don't shine <laughs> but before I could even like really say that he was just like no, like, don't worry, like, though, like, I don't want to push you too far, and whatever, and I was like, thanks, I think. <laughs> um, so, he walks me back, and while he's walking me back, he's kind of like, so, like, what what'd you think, like, how was your first kiss, whatever. I'm being so brutally honest with him, I'm like, it was, it was interesting, like, I don't really have, like, a word to describe it, I don't really have anything else to compare it to, and I don't really, blah, 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 blah. Like, I am rambling my mouth off, which I tend to do when I'm nervous. So he walks me back to the room, and um, last that was the last time I ever saw him. Um, we kept in contact a few more times, um, but he's kind of doing his own thing. He goes to a different school. It's quite a ways away from, uh, from here. So, yeah. I ran back into the room. I woke my mother up. I was like, Mom, he kissed me! Oh my god! <laughs> She wakes up and she was like, what? <laughs> She's so out of it. And I start rapid fire explaining what happened. I was like, oh my god, and like we went this and we did that and the police showed up and whatever. And she was like, what? <laughs> she was still so out of it. She's like, honey, honey, go take a bath. <laughs> like, go chill out. So I went to go take a bath and like I calmed down and I was like, I had my first kiss. Oh my god. Oh my god, I have my first kiss. What? Why? I was, I was freaking out. <laughs> um, so we left the next day and he messaged me to make sure I got back safe. And, um, 
yeah, that was really sweet. And that was my post-college, um, oh my god, I don't deserve to be in college. That was my pre-college, um, experience. <laughs> um, flash forward to a few months later, or like a month later, I had my overnight orientation. So my school offers, um, for incoming freshmen, an overnight orientation before your actual, like, orientation. So normally you would come to the school and they would tell you about it and, like, take you to, like, a pep rally and, like, give you, like, so many flyers that you wind up losing, like, halfway through the day because you just can't hold on to all of them. <laughs> um, but my school offered, um, overnight, an overnight experience, so you got to stay in one of the dorm rooms, which is not the one you wind up living in because, let me tell you, that one is so hard to get into, but... <laughs> um, and I was nervous all over again, like I had a roommate for the night and I didn't know how to act really, like I've never had a roommate, um, and by this point I had found out that I was actually going to be living in a forced triple, um, for at least the first few weeks of my freshman year and I was so scared, I was so scared, I'm like I don't even know how to share a room with one person, like how am I going to share a room with two people? <laughs> so I wound up um, meeting, um, my roommate that night, and she was really sweet, and we're gonna call her Beth. So, um, Beth I actually also haven't heard from since that night, but we went to an overnight, um, orientation, like, intro, like, with everyone else in the building, and, um, we wound up getting dinner together, and she was really sweet, and, uh, I had actually brought a deck of cards with me, and this is kind of what started a lot of things, in my opinion. It's a very big catalyst, and it's a very important part to a lot of the story. And I asked her, I was like, hey, do you want to go see if anyone across the hall, like, or like, like let's go knock on doors and see if anyone wants to play cards. Um, the rest of the people, so the way this room was set up was there were three rooms and a common room, which is, um, pretty much how a lot of the dorms here are set up um, and every room has two beds and then there's like another one common room. Um, we had a few more people in the suite with us um, uh, but they were kind of unsocial and they didn't really want to you know like do anything so we were like all right let's go see if anyone across the hall wants to play cards. So <laughs> I got like chills talking about this because it it set a lot of things in motion for me that night. I, um, being the brave little soldier I am, <laughs> went across the hall and knocked on the door and this guy opened up the door and I held up my cards and I was like, you guys want to play? And Beth was standing behind me and this kid that opened the door, let's call him, let's call him Jake. So Jake opens the door, and um, I kind of I go like, "Hey, you want to play?" And then before I can lose my own nerve, I kind of barge in there, <laughs> and there are three of the guys sitting around the couch. So there's two kids on one couch, and then there's another kid on the chair. And I'm like, "Hey guys, like I'm Jesse. This is Beth. You guys, um, like you know, we were just going around seeing if you guys want to play cards or whatever." And he, um, the guy that opened the door, Jake, he was like, yeah, guys, like, what do you think? Like, you want to let them play? Whatever. And the rest of the kids around the table were like, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, cool. And the first thing I thought about Jake was that he wasn't really cute, um, per se, in my opinion, but he was very charismatic. Um, he kind of knew how to, like, command attention from a room, which is really strange, um, looking back on it, but he, like, really knew how to like kind of get people involved and get really interested in like listening to what he was saying um so yeah uh we wound up all bonding a lot that night so let's go around the room so the two kids sitting in the chair um we'll call one of them zeke and the other one lucas let's do that so zeke and lucas were sitting on the chair and they had known each other. They both got into the school and they knew each other from like high school, I think. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they like knew each other previously. 
Um, and they were all, Jake, Zeke, and Lucas, and Beth actually were all from upstate New York, um, which is where I'm from, I'm from New York. Yeah, so we all wound up bonding that night. So it was Jake, Beth, Zeke, Lucas, and then there was the boy in the chair, and we're gonna call him Peter. Um, and yeah, so we were talking for a while. We were kind of like doing like, I think Never Have I Ever, and like a bunch of other stuff. Um, I'm gonna make it clear right now, we didn't have any alcohol that night. Um, alcohol came into play a little bit later, but up until this point, I still hadn't really um, been drinking. I tried, I think, my first drink at my first senior skip day, and I was like, this is disgusting, why would anyone want to do this? And I hadn't really been like a huge drinker since then. Um, now these kids had done a lot more than that. Um, I don't want to get into too specific, but you can kind of use your imagination, and they've done a lot more than just, you know, basic smoking and drinking. So, um, over the years. So, we were all kind of talking about our experiences. We randomly decided, like, hey, you guys want to, like, play, um, beer pong? I have played beer pong before at my house. I have an older sister, and she is the kind of partier of the two of us, and she's the one that will, um, like, would always have her friends over, and they would set up, um, beer pong on our dining room table. But the way they played it was, um, they would have drinks on the side and just drink and then they would play um, with the cups filled with water. I know that's not really the way that you're supposed to play it, but that's kind of how we used to play it. Um, but the table we had here was like really small, like it was so tiny, so I was like, how the hell do you think we're supposed to play that? And with what cups, like, and what like ping pong balls, like, so we wound up leaving um the place we were staying that night like we weren't like on a curfew or anything like we're college kids like they can't really do anything now so we walked um down the road so our school is basically shaped like a giant circle and there's a train station um that kind of cuts through and across the train tracks there is like a 7-eleven there's like you know like a market and, like things like that so we walked across the train tracks all the way down um to the 7-eleven and it was like 12 30 1 o'clock at this point I stayed up so late so we go in we get the pong cups and we get the ping pong balls and a few other things like snacks and stuff and then we just walk back we didn't try to buy alcohol we didn't try to do anything so we're all underage anyways at this point <laughs> so we walk back um and i remember specifically during this time i was still really into pokemon go and i was like pokemon hunting the entire time <laughs> and they were just looking at me like oh my god but we get back to the dorm and like they're all like doing it too like they're battling each other and shit and it was so <laughs> so so we take turns um like you know playing punk so uh zeke and lucas team up together and then i team up with jake and peter teamed up with beth so um, one thing I do remember is Lucas hitting a shot and then it starts spinning and you know like you can kind of like If you're like a female you're supposed to like blow it out if you're like a, a guy like you can like you know Scoop it out or whatever like if it's still like spinning around in the cup So I tried doing that and he threw another ball and it bounced off the rim of my glasses and landed in the cup right on top of the other one I <laughs> I've never seen another person do that since <laughs> So we all got really close that night um Beth, Zeke, Lucas, and Jake were all in a different um, part of campus, like they were living in a different dorm, a different part of campus, and me and Peter were living in the same like area. So I got pretty close with Peter afterwards. When I got to campus for my actual first day, um, I wasn't that scared anymore. I was still pretty terrified, but I knew that there were people there waiting for me. Peter actually wound up um, helping me move in that day. It was so hot. It was like really late August. I was dying. Oh my god. <laughs> and he came and he helped me move in and it was a little cramped, you know, like with the triple lifestyle. Um, so um, first it was just me and one international roommate. Um, she was all the way from China and um, my last roommate wound up coming in, and we're gonna call her... We're gonna call her Lily. She's gonna watch this and then just be like, What the fuck? Why'd you name me Lily? <laughs> so... I settled into my first night. Um... 
I had planned with um, the guys. So I had gotten Zeke's number, Lucas's number, Jake's number, and I had Peter's number. And we all planned, I also had Beth's number, um, but she didn't wind up showing up. And like I said, I haven't seen her since. Um, but we all planned to do like a reorientation so we were gonna have alcohol this time and we were gonna play um i think i bought a buying cards against humanity so we were gonna play that and you know it was gonna be like a whole new experience so um my international roommate and i we didn't really talk too much she spent a lot of time actually on the phone at like two in the morning um i guess because like the time difference whoever she was trying to call um got a little annoying uh when me and lily were trying to sleep but <laughs> so uh, me and Lily actually wound up, like, you know, becoming very good friends. I, um, wound up inviting her. The way our, our, um, like, quad is set up, so there are five buildings in our quad, and then we lived in, like, one here, and then, uh, Peter lived in, like, the other one, and then the rest of our friends from that night lived, like, in a totally different quad, and they, like, came up because Peter's roommate hadn't shown up, so he had a single room for the time being, so we were, like, Hell yeah, we're partying at your place. <laughs> so, I still didn't drink that much that night, but reorientation came around. It was like, you know, after that first Friday, after we had gotten a taste of what college was gonna be like, and I was like, I got this, it's easy, whatever, it's... <laughs> um, I was wrong. But, <laughs> but we get there, and we're all just like, you know, chilling. We're like, hey, we're freshmen, we're cool, we're in this college life, it's great. Um, yeah, so we all wound up playing Cards Against Humanity, it was great. I introduced, uh, Lily to all of them. She had already met, um, Peter the day he helped me move in, and it was a fun night that night, you know, they wound up going back and whatever. And then a few weeks later, I was hanging out with Peter in his dorm building, and we were in, like, the rec area, and they have, like, you know, a pool table, and they have a ping pong table, and they have a few other things, and we see these guys playing pool, um, in the most ridiculous way possible like they're like shooting it backwards they're like whatever like either purposely trying to mess up or just like really like don't know how to play and peter leans over at me and he's very sarcastic and he's very like very sarcastic <laughs> and he's like oh my god those guys suck and because i'm very cheeky and <laughs> um very like crazy i cut my hands over my mouth and I'm like hey you guys my friend thinks you suck <laughs> I'm not mature <laughs> so the guys look up and we're gonna call these two guys so the first one is a very tall um guy he's got black hair he's of Indian descent he's very um he's the one like making like all the jokes kind of like with the pool stick and we're gonna call him um, we're gonna call him Isaac. Okay. And his friend that's with him, we're gonna call him... <laughs> we're gonna call him Jeremy. <laughs> and that's kind of an inside joke. <laughs> so, Isaac and Jeremy, um, like, you know, kind of look over at us, and I was, I think, about to leave for class or something like that. I don't really remember the details of this day. I just remember that I was there when they met, and I remember, like, going like that. And, um, Peter wound up hitting it off with them, surprisingly, right? So, from that point on, we spent a lot of time in their suite. Um, and that's how I kind of met, like, the guys. Um, what wound up happening with Zeke and Lucas is Lucas wound up transferring out and, um, Zeke, we kept in touch for a little bit longer and then he wound up, um, graduating early because he had a mad amount of credits. I don't know how the hell he came in as a freshman, but he basically wound up graduating like a year and a half later. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically how everyone met and I'm gonna end it off here year for right now. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and um, leave your comments down below and I'll see you guys next time.